The reality is MGTOW is broken. Alright. MGTOW is just it just man. They really lose the ball. They don't understand women that well and the things they do understand about women they take it personally hypergamy hypergamy however you want to say it a lot of frustrated beaters take it personal you know they take hypergamy personal <laughs> it's like dude don't take it personal it's like taking the it's like going out for a swim at the beach and then a big wave comes and dumps you yeah food yeah waikiki yeah you have the big break you want to do? You, know, you want to dance with the G's in the big break? That's just how it is, man. You're going to get dumped and pumped, pumped and dumped by the big, big breaks and Waikiki, key, key, right? But hey, you know, <laughs> you got to understand, guys, what women really want, and you got to understand that 90% of women are seeking the 10% top guys. Okay, 90% of women, the top 90% of women are seeking the top 10% of men. I don't make these rules up. All right. I don't agree with them. I don't disagree with them. They just, they are what they are. Use them to your advantage. Don't take it personally. It's just like big swell surf, man. You know, it's like a big head wind. Sometimes you got to have a head wind to have a tail wind. That's just how it is, man. Okay? It's just, you got to roll with it. So how to be in the top 10% of men, okay? Women always seek their best option. Women always seek their best option. Whether they deserve it or not, they seek their best option. They're like, what can I get? What's in it for me? What's in it for me? Can I get a baby from this man? Can I get money from this man? Can I get a baby from this man? Can I get money from this man? These are the top priorities for women. And women will disagree with me. Some people will, women will, but just look around. You know, judge a person not by what they say, but how they act. Men are like, oh, but woman says this. And I'm like, yeah, cool. You know, her, she, she's moving her mouth. Or well, he's moving his mouth. There's a human moving their mouth. Words are coming out. Great. But what are they actually doing? Pay attention to where the hands are. Pay attention to the body language. Pay attention to where the person is. All right? If they're flaking out, they're just not that into you. And that's okay. You're not into everyone. No one's into you. Some people aren't even into themselves. So how to be in this top 10% of men? It's easy, man. It's easy to be in the top 10% of men. You just have to go to where you can be top percent, 10% of men. All right? Me, I'm six foot, I own six figures, and I'm packing seven inches with a six inch girth. They're just stats most women like. Maybe I'm a bit too big for some women, a lot of women, but, you know, in general, yeah. Women, like, women, women often say, there's that joke, what do you call a guy who's under six foot? A friend. You know, women are allowed to say that on Facebook, they're allowed to say that on Twitter, on their, they can put it on their Tinder profile if they want, and it's like, ha oh, it's a joke, they laugh about it. But imagine if a man said that, what if a man said, what do you call a woman? <laughs> I can't even make the jokes. I can't even make that joke, all right? I can't even. So I won't make the joke. So there's there is a double standard, and a lot of guys get bitter and bitter about it. It's just is what it is, man. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Stay out in the sun too long, you get sunburn. Doesn't mean the sun's bad. Okay. Avoid taking things personally, guys and girls. People avoid taking things personally. So how to be in top ten percent? It's easy, man. You got to go where you're valued. You have to go where you're valued, whether it's a job whether you're looking for a girlfriend or a boyfriend, you have to go where you're valued, man. Why would you stay in a job or a relationship or approach women or men who don't value your gifts? Why would you do that? Every relationship I've ever gotten out of, I just felt the person didn't value my gifts. I didn't feel valued enough. That's just me. You know, I didn't feel like I was going to contribute to this person anymore. I didn't feel my contributions were valued. And for me, contributions are my main driver in life. If I don't feel I'm contributing to the moment, whether I'm picking up plastic on the beach, I'm watering spiders in my garden, you know, I'm giving the ants sugar water. If I don't feel I'm contributing, I feel like I'm wasting my time. Like I, That's why I put out the best content. People, A lot of people don't like it, but... I'm just giving, out there to contribute. Not to be popular, I'm out there to contribute. I'm not out there just to make coin, I'm out there to contribute. I'd rather make $10 a day and make massive contribution, literally, 
than earn a million dollars a day. I literally would. And I can say that easily because I've been dead broke, homeless in the street, with just welfare to check the welfare check living, and where I'm at today with more money than ever before in my life. And, you know, I don't, I don't have to worry about money ever, ever again. So I can honestly say that is fun and cool and novel. And I'm grateful, very, very grateful, but it's not as good of a feeling as helping people help themselves, making the planet a better place for all, us and the animals in the environment. For me, that's my, that's my main payment. So you've got to go where you're valued, man. And, and guys out there thinking, oh, I'm not six foot tall, I don't, need, I don't earn six figures, you know, I don't have six inch you know, girth, blah, 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 blah. You know, ah, man, it's like, go, then go to where women appreciate you. Right, maybe you're five foot one. Go to where women appreciate a five foot one guy. Right, go where you're appreciated, man. Why would you just live in Los Angeles or Sydney or wherever and, and be undervalued by the local women? You know? Like, wh- how's that going to make you feel, man? Right? I'm very hedonistic. I like feeling good. I like treating people how I want to be treated. Why would you s- just try and convince people to like you who can't see the value in you? It's like me trying to convince someone who hates cyclists why they should get a, a sub seven kilo windbreak bike off me like what, why am i doing that yeah i mean maybe i'll convert someone but why would i just go and look for someone who wants that sub seven kilo windbreak bike you know and sell it to them give them a great deal go where you're valued go where you're valued simple as that so <laughs> a lot of guys from australia from the us and they moved to thailand they moved to Philippines where Asian women value them more, all right? People say, oh, you can't get a Western girlfriend, you know, <laughs> something wrong with you, you've got to go to Asia. Um, I mean, it, there's a bit of truth in that as well, but a lot of guys, I, mean, I even think, I was, I'm, you know, like Natasha, for me, she's more Filipino than Aussie, okay? She's just, for me, very low drama, very low maintenance, I meet her needs, it's all good. There's just minimal drama. Like, I come home and I'm, I enjoy seeing her. We enjoy seeing each other. We, we can live in each other's pockets. I don't want to leave the house to get away from her moods or whatever because she doesn't have them. She keeps herself in check. And I keep myself, we're keeping ourselves in check for each other. She values me and I value her. We value each other and that is the core of relationship. If the woman doesn't value you guys, what are you doing, man? <laughs> Women, if the man doesn't value you, what are you doing? All right? I'm scared of being lonely. I don't feel safe out there in the world. It's like, man, I, <laughs> I mean, speak for yourself, but I'd rather be lonely than be feeling unvalued by someone. I'm trying to convince them they should value me. <laughs> You know, I, I have people all the time, they're like, you know, what do you do for a job? And I'm like, yeah, I'm retired. And, like, oh, yeah. and maybe they're interested in social media. And I'm like, oh, yeah, social media, yeah, I can, I can turn you into a social media celebrity. Or I can tell, I can give you the best chance of social media potential. I can help you unleash your very best way, your very best potential on social media. And I would say I'm the best in the world at doing that. Because I don't know anyone out there who's helped noobs build a six-figure income social media career. I don't know anyone out there who's built more million-plus subscriber channels than me. You know, I just have a knack for that. I can do that better for others than I can do it for myself. So, you know, um, so then I can, I, I go where I'm valued. And if people value that, then they appreciate what I can do for them and they treat me accordingly. Your gifts will make room for you in life. People are, people are well, I've got nothing anyone values. Oh, well, then have have gifts, man. Like do what your passions are. Do what your passions are, and your gifts will make room for you. Men don't care how much money a woman has. Right? I mean, if you can pay your way, that's that's a bonus. But men, like men like me, who you know don't have to worry about money, I don't care if Natasha has you know a thousand bucks in the bank or a million dollars in the bank. Right? I don't want her for her money. I don't need her money. But flip it around, a woman does care about how much money you've got in your bank because it reflects, and people, some people say, oh, hypergamy doesn't care how you got your money. Uh, yes and no. Uh, initially, it doesn't 
But if you aren't the man who can build wealth, build financial, manage wealth, manage financial situations, she'll be like, hmm, this guy's really good in other areas, but he, he, he's not self-made. He, he can't really do much. You know, what's, what's going on there? They'll gnaw on that. You know, unless you earn way more than them. If, that, if you earn less than your woman, your woman will lose attraction for you at some level. She just will. All right. Depends on the girl as well, but she just will because she'll be like, oh, you know, oh, you, you're not as good as me now. Like it's just women need to be someone they look up to. They need to be someone with someone they look up to, to someone they can respect, and who makes them feel respected. So if she's earning more money than you, yeah, and you're just, just parasiting off her, maybe she's in the rebound, maybe she's lonely, maybe she's older and she doesn't have as many options. Then yeah, she'll be like, she'll sort of pay for your time but at the same time as a man you're going to feel like you know used to gigolo which is fine if that's what you're into and you just know you'll be like oh you know this is like the best I've got she's only with her because she's got money and it's like and then she'll feel that and it's just a it's just a shitty vibe all that around but you know, we flip it around if the woman doesn't have any money like let's say I go to Thailand or the Philippines let's say I'm single um, well, let's say my twin brother goes there alright I'm a twin brother and, you know, he's nice to local women, you know, he's on Tinder or the dating websites. Women are just going to be all over him. Because they're going to like, wow, this guy's got security, he, he's Western, he's, he's nice, he's got, he's six foot, blah, 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 he looks like, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they're just going to be all over that. And my twin brother could come back to Australia and put up profiles on, you know, Bumble, Tinder, can fish whatever it's called fish in the sea or something match.com whatever they use and uh he'll get some success but he'll have to earn for it and fight for it and you know and you basically pretty much all women in the west all women in the west let's say 99 percent of women in the west will treat you like you're a rapist you know <laughs> they'll treat you like a rapist so you're you're guilty until proven innocent, or you're you're a sex predator, or you're a sex offender, or whatever. Even if they don't know you, that's just you have to. It's like so you say, "Hey, let's let's go out for a walk tonight." Most of them be like, "No, nah," you know. So you have to prove to them that you're not a rapist. But if you're in Thailand or the Philippines and said, "Hey, let's go catch up tonight, go for a walk," you know, a lot of women, if they're really like Asian, Asian, not Westernized yet, they'll say, "Yeah, no way, let's go out." All right, so why would you want to go out with a woman and have to convince her? That you're not a rapist. That you're not some deviant dude. You know what I mean? Oh, it's just... The Western system, it just breaks women. Alright? So... Now, but women would be like, Oh, you have to be safe. You have to be safe. Yeah, you're cool. You have to be safe. I agree. But if you live in Australia, if you live in the US, like, the law, you know, is going to protect you pretty well. Alright? But a guy, there's no law that's going to protect him from a fake rape claim or a fake Me Too claim. Like, there's no law at all. The law is, you need a good barrister, you need a hundred grand in your bank, and you hope that the jury doesn't rule against you, even if the claims are totally fake. Because <laughs> it's post Me Too era, it's 2022, and the chance of you going to prison for a fake claim is pretty real. It's pretty high. All right? Now, the chance of that happening, of actually getting a fake claim against you, that's pretty rare, but it can happen. And, you know, or it doesn't even be policing involved, gets in Google or whatever. And it can be disastrous for most people out there. For me, someone like me, you know, I had those dramas from an, a boyfriend of a girl that we hooked up with, and then the boyfriend made docos about me, and it went around. I mean, it, personally, it, I, I, you know, I enjoyed that challenge because it made me a better person. It showed me who's in my life is worth keeping around, you know, and, just, and it showed me how basic people are, and it showed me how who, how much support I have. Um, you know, but that's me. You know, I'm like a, a freak like that. You know, <laughs> the average person happened to them, they'd probably, probably jump off a bridge, you know. So I enjoy the challenges in life. But then I said, like, why would you, like, yeah, if my, if I was giving advice to men, I would say, if you're finding you're not valued by Western women, why would you continue to try to chase that, you know? Why would you do that? I mean, I set up accounts on dating websites, I've catfished women, I've used my images, I've used other men's images, you know, I've been five foot tall, I've been me, or I've been, you know, plus me, 
And so I've been studying it, you know, I've, I've been creating these accounts and having discussions with women in the chats over the years, for the last seven years, because I find it really interesting, this whole social dynamics. And, um, you know, my conclusion is that the Western system, most women are quite damaged from that. And, and men as well, you know, most people in the West are quite damaged from that. But we're just talking about dating here and the topic is advice for men, so we'll focus on the women part. You know, so like, I'm just like, why would you just, why would you chase that, man? You know, why would you just have to, it's like, basically, the Western world, and how I see it, this is my reality, what I see, a big bomb has been dropped on people, men and women are taught to fight each other, not trust each other, you know, and so you just, straight away, you're, you're guilty, unproven innocent, you're guilty until proven innocent versus innocent until proven guilty. Like, in the, in Asia, if you're dealing with Asian women, like real Asian women, you're innocent until proven guilty. In the West, you are guilty until proven innocent, right? Prove to me you're not a rapist. Prove to me you're safe. It's like, what the fuck? Like, you know? So, if you want to date in the West, that's just what you have to deal with most of the time, right? That's what you have to deal with most of the time. And so, you've got to accept that, right? If you want to date in the West, Western woman, and she might be a Western Asian woman, she might be a Western African American woman or whatever, Western Caucasian woman, that's just what you have to deal with, man. Right? So just roll with that. I personally wouldn't roll with that. I would just go straight to Asia and get someone who's, you know, don't bring them back to Australia, don't bring them back to the US, just keep them there so they stay traditional and go from that. Get a vasectomy. Get a vasectomy. Because most women will see you as a nothing more than a baby donor and ATM. And I've done it, I've done it, I've done it, I've done it. I've, done it. I've used the same profiles where I said I've got a vasectomy, don't want kids. And don't get that much attention. You know, maybe you get like, you know, chicks who want to have a bit of fun, and that's what you're looking for. And then you'll have, you know, I'll say, oh, you know, look, I want to have kids, I want to get married. And it's like, bang, it's on, man. It's on, like, financially secure, looking to settle down, have kids, and get married. And it's, man, you, you are, the inbox gets absolutely smashed. Absolutely smashed. Um, done profiles, I said, yeah, I've got a girlfriend. Blah, 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 I was in town, not much interest, you know, not much interest, whereas if you were a girl, and say, yeah, I've got a boyfriend, but I'm in town for a few days, just seeing what's, what's going on, you get so many guys hit you up, all right, so women, what they want, is they don't want guys who have a girlfriend, even though they're like, oh, well, he's, you know, if you broke up, then they'll be all over you, but if you're taken, they won't really be that interested, but if you're recently broken up, then that's that's a good sign that you're a, a good catch, especially for long-term railo. So women are looking for a boyfriend, they're looking for a baby donor, and they're looking for money, financial support, or financial stability. And that's like, you know, 95% of women out there are looking for that. 95% are looking for that. So, <laughs> so that's why some guys are, well, I better, I better not have a vasectomy, and, uh, 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 and I better be able to get pay your money, because I won't be able to get a girlfriend otherwise. <laughs> no, 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 dude, what are you doing, mate? You're going to get sperm jacked and just you give your life away like that. No, no, don't do that. I mean, do it if you want, but... You be be chasing those that five percent of women out there who are woke and realise how tough it is to have kids today. They're not in this baby fever world or baby rabies world. Go, I don't care. I'm gonna have a kid and it's gonna be paradise. We're gonna go to Hawaii. We're gonna go to Maui. I'm gonna raise a kid in the waterfall and it's gonna be like a rainbow child. <laughs> it's like what the heck is that? And then the kid's gonna grow up and go into society and probably hate you. <laughs> and you'll be like, damn, I just did eighteen years of rainbow child Hawaii waterfall life. And now my kid hates me, doesn't even talk to me, and is smoking meth in Skid Row and selling their body on the street to get more drugs. Like, it's just, you know, that happens, man. It happens. That's, that's the reality for most people out there. Your kids are going to hate their life. They're going to hate you. That's the default setting most of the time, especially today. I mean, I look at my parents' friends who have kids in their teens or early 20s, and it's a, it's a minority, it's a minority of those kids who don't have clinical depression, clinical anxiety, you know? drug issues, eating all the sort of issues, like, why would you want to do that to yourself, man, why would you want to have kids, and that's, and these kids are like teen to 20s, imagine in 20 years time, man, imagine if your kid's born, you're going to have a kid today, in 20 years time, how hard it's going to be for them, or in 15 years time when they're 15, like, it is going to be insane, like next door, they have parties here, I live in a very, very affluent suburb, most of the houses, you know, one, one to five million dollars, and, um, Next door, they have parties. You know, when the mum parents are out, the parties are on. The kids are like 15 or 17 or something. Just, I look up the fence, I see drug consumption and fights and like, 
you know, and, and these kids are private, they're all private school kids, all right, they're money, there's Audis in the drive, there's Mercedes, there's like, there's, there's money going on here, and these kids are, man, just are messed up, and then they're fighting with the parents, and the parents are like, you gotta go see a psychiatrist, and I'm just like, damn, far out, far out, you know, like, what a life, man, and I live next door to them, and I live like a freaking king, I get up every day and do whatever I want to do, and they get up every day and work in the job they hate to buy shit they don't need to impress the other neighbours who are doing the same, and to put the kids through the private school so they can brag to the other private school mums and dads, oh yeah, my kids don't, blah, 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 blah. and it's like, damn, if that's the life you want, then damn, good for you, so that's the deal, how to be a top 10% of man, just go where you're valued, man, go where you're valued, and that's going to be in probably in Africa's, Asia's, you know, Otherwise, what are you doing, man? Like, how much, how hard do you want to have life? Like, how, why do you want to suffer so much? You know, like, why do you want to suffer so much in life? Why do you want, why do you want to make life harder than it has to be? Yeah, and guys like that, they're like, oh, yeah, I married a Filipino lady and it was amazing, but then I brought her back to Australia and she got westernized and then she was just like my ex-wife. And I was like, oh, dude, don't bring them back. I mean, you know, just keep them there. Like, keep. Even bring your Western girl over to Asia so she can see what's going on. You know, like, that, that's a good one. I want to say Asia. I don't mean the big cities like KL or Bangkok. I mean, like, in the rural areas where life is more natural and organic vibing versus cutthroat city, city pollution, pollution, concrete, you know, work slave routine. That's what I recommend. Asia, man, get a vasectomy. And if you treat the women a lot, great they will treat you like an absolute king man i know been there done that you know um that's what i love about natasha she's like a, a philippine she's like a panay or an eight a Thai lately she's just amazing you know so natasha is definitely more asian than western um and that's partly because we've we've been to the asia and, and natasha is like so you know she's so lucid and and with the word work if we can use that word I'm not sure if that's the right word, but just conscious. There we go. Conscious. Conscious. Get woke, go broke. She's conscious, man. Like, she's just, she's very, very, very aware of her vibe and controlling that and giving to what I need and, and vice versa. So, that's what you want to have, man. You want to have someone who's going to raise the vibe when they're around you. And, and, you, and you're going to do the same. You're going to push each other and keep the intensity high, all right? You're going to be there for each other. It's teamwork. It's teamwork. It's teamwork. And you're not going to have the same level of teamwork. At the end of the day, that's what it comes down to teamwork, doesn't it? Like, if, if, if you've been in the Philippines, and I don't mean Manila, or I mean like the, the like Davao City, you know, the outskirts of Davao, like in the slums, like there's a thing called community over there. In Australia, community means something different than Asia. So in Asia, it's like community, like if someone falls over in the street, you know, they'll, they'll generally help you, unless maybe it's in China, you know, but that's again, that's different, depends where we are in China, but in, in Asia, Asia, like the poor Asia, like Indonesia or something like that, like if you, you know, if you, like if you're a tourist over there and you fall over and you know, people will come and help you. If, if an Asian tourist comes to Australia and falls over, they're going to be probably disappointed with the outcome. Right? They're going to dis be disappointed, hopefully not, but they're most likely going to be disappointed with the support they get if they fall over or someone steals their bag. They'll just be like, yep, cool, mate, you know. So it's going to be different, like the, the hospitality. The hospitality I've had in Asia when I was a bike packer, when I was on a budget and, and, you know, just lost and dead broke. The hospitality I had in Asia used to make me cry, like, in, especially in Thailand. I, I would literally cry with gratitude. I wouldn't really generally try and cry in front of people, but afterwards I'd be like, man, these people are so nice, like, you know. And often people meet, people meet me and like, yeah, dude, you're, you're, you're such a nice person compared to your persona online. What's the deal? You know, I'm like, well, that's just, you know. That's what happened to me, and I like to pay it back, you know. So yeah, going to Asia, man, is 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 freaking rad. It is changing. It's getting more westernized with social media, and girls are getting a bit, you know, more freaking TikToked up and stuff. But go there while you can, man, and be a chill dude. Like be chill, be chill, be carbed up, be sugared up, be hydrated, and treat people how you want to be treated. Um, but yes, I'll go over there and, and just the hospitality, man. You don't get that level of hospitality in Australia, man, unfortunately. Maybe back in the 80s and 70s you might. But it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's a different world. So yeah, go where you're valued. If Adelaide didn't exist, I live in Adelaide, Australia. I just love it, the nature here and stuff. 
but you know, and I, I'm I'm lucky. I got I got Natasha and stuff. But if it, if I didn't have Natasha, <laughs> why would I live in Australia, man? You seriously, why would I live in Australia? And if I was unless I was like some elite bike racer or whatever, or runner or whatever, yeah, for sure. But honestly, like if I was just an average single guy, why would I want to live in Australia? <laughs> why would, even same for America? Like why would you want to live in America if you're you're looking for a, a good woman or whatever? Like you just, I mean, they're there for sure. They're they're definitely there. I mean, it's easy for me because I've got status online and, and women just hit me up. But, but what if you don't have status? You know, what if you're not six foot tall and and you're not meeting that you know Western sort of you know status quo that women are after? Like, what if you're not meeting that? What are you doing still doing here and, and chasing Western women who are just not going to value you, man? You know, they're not going to value you, and you know you're going to be like their backup option, all right? Women like, I don't want to be an option. I don't want to feel like I'm an option. I want to feel like I'm the priority. <laughs> They're great. But then treat guys like that as well. All right? So, again, women only care, as a foundation, about two things. They care about how they feel. All right? Women see the world for their emotions. Masculine men see the world through logic and rational behavior. Women see the world for their emotions so it's how you make her feel, how you make her feel, and how she feels around you. All right? They're not exactly the same, but they they cross over. How she makes you, how you, how you, how she feels, all right? and how you make her feel. So if she thinks about you and she doesn't feel good, doesn't matter what you've done in the relationship. There's no such thing in a woman's brain as relationship equity. It can all end in the next five minutes. You, you might be married for 50 years, done all the right things, given her the kids she wanted, paid for everything, sacrificed your dreams and aspirations, and all of that can be wiped in just a couple of minutes. Just a couple of minutes, okay? Just a couple of minutes. An example might be, you know, you... You know, you went. You had living in the country, and you you, you shagged an ex girlfriend or whatever. You you know, you're drunk, and it's just a moment of of you know lapse in discipline or whatever. And then she finds out, she oh, it's over, it's over, it's over. Even if you don't care about the ex girlfriend or, or or some you know some one night or whatever, you know, even if you don't care, you don't know what the name was. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's over for her, all right. So there's no such thing as relationship equity. So a lot of guys don't understand that, and for, and for feminine men as well. They're like, yeah, it's over too. That, 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 there's no relationship equity for them. So that's where I'll tell people, you're going to have balance in life. You're going to have some balance in life. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's the deal. Go where you are valued. All right? Value yourself. Your gifts will make room for you. Go where you're valued. All she cares about is how she feels and how you make her feel. She doesn't care if you care as long as she, she feels cared for. The guy's like, what? Why would you only care about how you feel versus actually someone cared about you? Welcome to the women's brain. They only care if they feel like you care. Okay, you might care in the you might you might care about her more than anyone in the world ever has or would. But if she doesn't feel that, she don't care, and she don't have feels for you, bro. You are replaceable. All right, women. Women, women. Will, a lot of guys are like, man, I was married for 20 years and she replaced me in like a night. That was probably going a bit longer <laughs> than the night, but women get over guys so quick because they sort of had to because in nature, you know, men go and fight and they get killed in battle or whatever. And so women just ha- have to learn to like detach from one guy and boom, jump onto the next for, for protection and provisions. So that's why women get over guys really, really quick, all right? As long as she's got a replacement. If she doesn't have a replacement, she'll be like, oh, but if she's got a replacement, you know, she's, to get over someone, she's going to get underneath someone else. If she's got that replacement, you're going to be forgotten real quick. Right? You're going to be forgotten really, really quick. If she might remember you if you get with a new girlfriend and she's prettier than her. <laughs> and then, you know, three, two, one, me too claim. Fake me too claim. So, yeah, but otherwise, you know, again, the women are like cats. If you've looked after feral cats, you know, domestic, domesticated feral cats, then you will, uh, you'll appreciate the yes, you those. That is the deal. That is the deal, gang. Don't take it personal. Avoid taking things personal. Just seek to understand. Seek to understand. Avoid taking things personal. 
and avoid making assumptions. She's not that into you. If she was into you, you'd freaking know about it. When a girl's into you, damn, you know about it. She doesn't flake. First date feels are strong. You're going home, she's going to come back to your place first night, man. But maximum second night. Maximum second night. If she's not giving you 4K, you know, 120 frames per second, deep throat on the first night, the second, minimum, maximum second night, she just ain't that into you, dude. She ain't that into you, and that's okay. That's okay. Move on. Friend zone. Next. Don't take it personal. Don't never be a douche. Never be a douche. Just stay chill. Roll with her emotions and stay safe.